Welcome, dear friends, to another episode of the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. Before we begin our discussion of today's topic, we invite you to please watch this short video clip. The Church of Jesus Christ is the only religion I ever went to. My father was a minister and we would go to church three times a week. Uh, when I was, in the, I was in the military, in the Navy for 16 years, and I went to other churches and stuff that have so many different kinds of religions. I went to one church where I sat down and prayed, and they told me I was safe. I say, it's, it's not that easy. You, you just can't pray and the automatic say that you're saved because I have read the Bible and I understand a lot about it. And I uh, listened to Iglesia Christa in the Bible and everything they say is true. Remember in the Bible when they say a missional from the Far East? And where's the Far East? The Philippines. And who was that? Brother Felix Manalo. Look at him. Look at all the trials and tribulation he had to go through. I mean, World War II, <laughs> World War II Japanese, World War I, 1914 when he got his child, all of these obstacles and stuff that he had to go through, everybody should realize, it's just not one man, it's God. God's the one that's teaching him to do all this stuff. And that's how it should be. He read the Bible. He studied the Bible over and over again. And when he have ob obstacles with other ministers and stuff, he come at them with the Bible, and they just wasn't ready for him. He, they couldn't contradict what he says or nothing because he was the one fully propelled by God to teach it. The church administration, He's the one to do the outline for the church. And he, he's the one that receives from God what messages and stuff he want, wishes to put out. If the church don't have administration, what's going to happen? We, we lost already. My family, we all went up to Manila. We uh, went to Central, and we sat down in this big living area, living room area. And when Brother Owado come out, his presence, just for him and his presence was such a feeling. When I met uh, Brother Owado V. Manila, I have never met anybody like him in my life. The first thing I say to you, hello, I'm from F. Manalo. <laughs> I did that. Hello, F. Manalo. Oh, no, I'm from San Diego, California. Yeah. But uh, just, just to see him, it, it's just so impressive. It just, I can say, I was having chill bump. I say, where's the power coming from? Because I, I in the whole room, I can just feel this. God had really blessed the Galicia Christian Church and all the people inside. How can you accomplish all of this thing if it wasn't for God? And God you, you use him as the instrument. But it is important for us to obey the administration and the church administration because it all comes down to 
to teach us. He's teaching the words from the Bible, only from the Bible, nothing else. He's not making up words. He's not telling lies. He's just telling the truth where he comes from the Bible. Every time I pray, I always pray church administration, watch over and keep them from safe harm and danger. Then at the end, I pray, pray brother, or water be Manalo. I would say, give him the wisdom and the knowledge to carry on and to do the will. Help him in his time of need. Keep him and his family safe from all harm and dangers. Let a few observers notice and are baffled by the high regard and respect that members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ accord their spiritual leaders, foremost of whom is the executive minister of the church, who currently is Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. While many people admire such deference and submissiveness that Church of Christ members show with regards to their leaders, there are a few who label it as pure fanaticism or blind obedience. So, for the sake of our viewers and listeners, Brother Dennis, what is the basis of the Church of Christ members in showing great regard to their leaders and great respect and high esteem for those who look after their souls? Dear friends, Church of Christ members submit to the authority of their leaders not only because some rules of propriety or convention demand it. And definitely not out of force of habit or in observance of human tradition. Rather, they do so in obedience to God's commandment as recorded here in Hebrews 13, and the verse is 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. Dear friends, our Lord God commands true Christians to obey and to submit to their spiritual leaders inasmuch as they keep watch over their souls or look after their spiritual welfare. Apostle Paul also pointed out that Christians should make sure their spiritual leaders do their work with joy and not with grief or groans, for that would be of no benefit to them. Now, Brother Dennis, is it only respect that Christians are commanded to give to their spiritual leaders? No, Brother Noel, our Lord God expects them to do much more, as articulated by Apostle Paul in his first epistle to the Christians in Thessalonica. In chapter 5, the verses are 12 down to 13. We beg you, our friends, to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. Be at peace among yourselves. Dear friends, Christians are duty-bound to treat those who guide and instruct them in the Christian life with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. And this is the main reason the Church of Christ members hold their spiritual leaders in the highest esteem and accord them genuine affection. God expects them to do nothing less. So, dear viewers, it is clear that the basis of the members of the Church of Christ in respecting, loving, and obeying their spiritual leaders, especially the executive minister, are the words of God written in the Bible. It is not fanaticism, nor is it blind obedience. Rather, it is in compliance with God's instructions. Now, why is it also proper and fitting for true Christians to recognize the authority of their spiritual leaders, particularly the minister entrusted to administer the whole church? Because his duty, Brother Noel, as steward of the church, comes from our Lord God Himself, as testified to by Apostle Paul in Colossians. The chapter is 1 and the verse is... 25. I have become its minister according to God's administration that was given to me for you to make God's message fully known. Dear friends, in the church, God appoints a minister like Apostle Paul in the first century church who is vested with the authority to administer the flock and make God's message fully known. 
In our time, he is the executive minister of the church. And along with his task to make God's words fully known to the church, uh, Brother Dennis, what other authority or power was vested upon him by the Lord God? He, together with the ministers assisting him, had been given the authority to lay down rules for Christians to obey. Examples of those rules were the ones decided by the apostles and elders of the church during the first century, as we can read in Acts chapter 16 and the verses are four down to five. As they went through the towns, they delivered to the believers the rules decided upon by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. And they told them to obey those rules. So the churches were made stronger in the faith and grew in numbers every day. So, Brother Dennis, and especially our dear viewers, we should take note how the early Christians were edified or strengthened in their faith and how they increased in number when they obeyed the rules decided upon by the apostles and the church elders. In other words, the members of the church themselves stand to gain if they submit to those rules determined by their spiritual leaders. And we should also point out, Brother Noel and their viewers, that those rules are made for the purpose of making sure that the teachings of God written in the Bible are strictly followed or obeyed. What are some of those specific examples of those rules determined by the church administration that are intended for the obedience of God's teachings or commandments? Uh, we can cite as examples, Brother Noel, the command of God that whenever Christians gather together for worship, everything has to be done decently and in order, as recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and the verses are 26 and 40. And how can such commandment of the Almighty God uh, regard a decent and orderly worship service be fulfilled? Uh, the church administration has determined some rules, for example, concerning uh, seating arrangement. The attendees cannot just sit wherever they want. There are certain rules that need to be followed. Uh, rules concerning uh, the attire that should be worn in the worship service, attire that is fitting and appropriate for the sacred occasion. We can also cite rules concerning the proper decorum or behavior that should be seen among those who attend the congregational worship service. Now, these rules are being enforced so that the gatherings that we render to God will be orderly and solemn as commanded by our Lord God Himself. And why should Christians obey even those rules being enforced by the ones entrusted to administer the church, just like what the apostles did during their time? Because our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that all decisions that are being rendered by those who administer the church are being approved or sanctioned by God in heaven, as recorded here in Matthew 18, verses 18 to 19. As surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. As written in the Bible, dear viewers, the vine mentioned refers to the commandments of the Almighty God, as stated in Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 1, with which people are bound when they believe the true gospel, preach to them, and receive baptism in the body of Christ or the church of Christ. And we can read that in Mark 16, 15 to 16, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and also Colossians 1, 18. The viewers, the members of the church of Christ today witness how our spiritual leaders, especially our executive minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, is working hard to make sure that we are taught with the words of God and that we obey all of them. Because by doing so, we can be pleasing to God and our services to Him will be acceptable in His sight. Brother Eduardo V. Manalo tirelessly visits congregations of the church throughout the entire world to see for himself the condition of the brethren and convey unto them God's teachings that will guide them in their day-to-day -day living. And now that the church has grown and expanded to reach 147 countries and territories, and with membership consisting of 134 races and nationalities, the work of the executive minister of the church is ever more delicate and demanding. Nonetheless, Brother Eduardo Manalo does not mind making all the sacrifices 
necessary to cater to the spiritual needs of all the members worldwide. Thus, for those asking why we highly esteem and love our spiritual leaders, especially our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Vimanalo, the answer is plain and simple. God commands us to do so. And why do we find it easy and delightful to obey such command? Because we ourselves see how our spiritual leader labors and toils for our sake, sacrificing personal comfort and safety to preach to us God's words and bring us closer to Him and His blessings. His genuine love and concern for us is palpable and deeply felt. And so we members of the Church of Christ are unabashed in expressing our love for our executive minister, who at present is Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Knowing that we are always in his thoughts and prayers, he is also constantly in ours. That's the least we can do in appreciation of the selfless love and concern for our souls. Dear friends, thank you for joining us.